Week 14, New York Jets, Miami Dolphins, take two. 2-0, two oh, I'll let you know. I didn't mean to rhyme. What is up, Finn fans? Like I said, New York Jets. We're in New York. It's not New York. It's New Jersey. It's my my state. It's my area. I'm not going to the game. I'm going next week to the Giants game. If you guys are interested or going, let me know. Going to next week's game, Dolphins-Giants. Me and my dad will be there. If you guys want to hang out, say what's up to me and my dad. See us in person. See how tall I am. Because I know for a fact. When I finally meet a bunch of you subscribers, a bunch of you guys, which if it's not next week, it'll be next year at a Dolphins game, or maybe I'll go down to Miami for the draft. I haven't decided yet. I know for a fact a lot of you guys are going to go, wow, you are tall. I get it a lot. I get it a lot. Let's break down Jets, Dolphins preview video. Got the injury report. Some moves were made yesterday. I'm going to talk about that. Five things, some other things. Now, you could see this corner, right? This is what I like to call the dolphin corner. You got my merch. Behind my merch is a pillow. One of you guys sent me. Got a few things up here like the plate. Roberto sent me. Got a bunch of things. Got some other things up here. I'm going to decorate this Christmassy. I haven't done it yet. I'm going to put some garland, some nice lights. It's going to get Christmassy for right now. I'm decorating other things. Christmassy. Christmas is my favorite holiday. I'm going to say Christmas one more time. We're going to jump into it. All right. So let's talk about the injury report. Like usual. Pop it up on my face. Our injury report is quite tiny compared to what it used to be, right? Jerome Baker, limited practice. He's good to go. Julian Davenport, I just I hope he doesn't go. But he's got a full practice. Just I, He's just bad. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, still got his shoulder injuries, all that stuff. But he's Fitzmagic. He'll, he'll pull a rabbit out of his butt and he'll do his thing. Alan Hearns, full practice. Got an ankle injury. He'll be fine. Nick Needham, groin injury. Limited practice. Hope he can go. He's one of the best corners that is playing for us right now. Stephen Parker and Kev Webster, groin, ankle, limited practice on them. All of our corners, limited practice, absolutely terrifies me. Now, I'd show you the Jets injury report, right? I've th I started doing that where I show you the other team's injury report so we can go off of that, see what the th what's going on with the other team. Theirs is long. I'm looking at it now. It's very long. I'll talk about some of the guys that are very interesting. Number one, Jamal Adams. He's got an ankle injury. He hasn't practiced for the past two days. Again, I record this on Thursday night. I don't know if he's practicing Friday, but as of me recording this, he hasn't practiced. And then other than that, you got, you know, Brian Poole. I'm looking at this and I'm like, no one, Le'Veon Bell didn't practice. There you go. He had an illness on Thursday. Other than that, there's no one on here that I'm like, ooh, if they don't play, that it could hurt them. You know, Ryan Griffin, their tight end illness, but he limited. With the Jets, it, it wasn't really much to talk about. But for the Dolphins, it got smaller. Now, but for the Dolphins, the reason it got smaller is if you have an injury, right, that is going to take you out for about three weeks, two to three weeks, right? We've only got four weeks left in the season, including Sunday's game. There's no point. You're just going to go to IR. We'll, we'll fill your spot with a guy that can potentially be picked, you know, taken from other teams. Brian Floyd's literally said that in his press conference, I think, yesterday. He said he is constantly looking at the waiver wire, constantly looking at practice squads, seeing who these, some of these talents he could poach from other teams. He's constantly doing it. And you could see it happening because not only did he pick up the wide receiver and the offensive lineman yesterday, not yesterday, uh, Wednesday, but yesterday he claims defensive tackle Zach Sealer. If I said it wrong, I said it wrong. <laughs> off of the rave, of Ravens wave cut him. We claim him off of waivers, and we waived Isaiah Prince, our, our our draft pick, Isaiah Prince. They're gonna try to put him to practice squad. He'll probably clear waivers and get to practice squad. I honestly can't see anyone picking him up, but they're picking up players. And Brian Flores said that he said he's constantly looking, and this is the time to do it. This whole season has been who's gonna be on the team next year. Who can we build off of? Who can we do all this stuff with? And that's that's essentially what he's doing now. So they pick up defensive tackle, Zach Sealer. Defensive tackle, defensive end. It all depends. Like sometimes Christian Wilkins plays defensive end. Sometimes he plays defensive tackle. Sometimes he drops back like yesterday and smacks the ball in the air, almost had an interception. You never know what, what Brian Floyd says up his scheme, him and Patrick Graham. 
really great. So, for like I said, for their injury report, for us, everyone that is able to play seems like they're going to play. Um, still doesn't mean we have a lot. <laughs> but everyone who's able to play seems like they're going to. For them, I think the biggest thing is Le'Veon Bell with the uh, illness. Jamal Adams is huge. If Jamal Adams can't play, that might really hurt them. But let's jump into the five things the Miami Dolphins need to do to beat the New York Jets. Now, I know you guys say, hey, it's always the same. It's the same thing every time. You got to do this, do that, you do this. Some of you guys get a little sassy and you say, you know, be better. <laughs> Be a better team. Don't don't be you. I don't know. But again, no importance from first, from one to five, five to one. There's no importance, and it it varies from team the team to team that they play. I look at tape. I look at how the team plays. I look at their strengths, their weaknesses, what we can exploit, what we need to work on ours that they're going to export from us, and I change it up week to week. So let's jump into it. Number one, the prime example of why it changes from week to week. We need a repeat performance from Devontae Parker and Mike Gazicki. Devontae Parker for the past couple weeks has been killing it. Now, I've read a few comments on message boards and even in my comment section saying, you know, Devontae Parker had one good game and however wants to crown him and make him Randy Moss. Now, people got to stop using that word everybody because it's not everybody. Everybody's not doing this. Everyone's not saying Brian Flores should be coach of the year. Everyone's not saying Brian Flores is the next best coach. What a good, I'll talk about it after this because I'm going to go on a, on, a t on a rant and has nothing to do with this. But Devontae Parker, for the past three weeks, has been doing really well. Week 11 against Buffalo, seven catches, 135 yards. That's actually pretty good. Uh, week 12, he had six catches for 91 yards. That's actually pretty good. Last week, he had seven catches, 159 yards, and two, in, two touchdowns. That's pretty good. For the past three weeks, he's been doing pretty good. All season, but doing pretty good. I think since the bye week, he's like leading the league in um, receptions or yards. Or, he's not leading it, but he's like top five for the, from the past six weeks. So he's doing really good. He's getting into the groove. Again, it takes a minute for new players to pick up a new coaching scheme and pick it up. And you can see it happening as the season goes along. I just boot my mic. <laughs> but he needs to repeat. Also, Gazicki. Gazicki needs to, re to repeat. Gazicki, the last time we played the Jets, six for six, 95 yards. We exploited their weakness. We did it last week. Jordan Mills was sucking wind for the Eagles. Hey, we're just going to keep throwing it at Devontae Parker because he can't cover the broad side of a barn. That makes no sense. But I said it. Last week, seven for five, 79 yards and a touchdown. So we need duplicated performances from both those guys. You know, Alan Hearns will pop up randomly, but we need duplicate performance from those guys. Catch everything that's thrown your way, especially Devontae Parker. If Jamal Adams is out, that would be a huge thing to export. Just keep tossing the ball up because their corners are, eh, eh. Their defense is good. Don't get me wrong. Jets defense is pretty good. I don't know how they lost to the Bengals, but the Jets defense is nothing to scoff about. But with Jamal Adams out, it could be a big hit for them. Big hit for them. Number two, run the ball. I say this every week. Sometimes we get it, like those few times Mark Walton actually ellipsed, eclipsed 100 yards. But Laird is now doing his thing. And Laird got a touchdown, called him the intern, got his first touchdown, got the extra point, uh, the two-point conversion. Laird is doing his thing. So let's see more Laird. Let's see some more Gaskins, especially with Blage going to IR. Let's see these guys get incorporated. Let's see what they can do. See if they're going to build around them. Because you need to, we need to know. We need to know. What is going on? One of you guys commented uh, last video, and it was it was great thinking because the reason we were forced to blage on us is because the Dolphins need to know, are we going to build with him? Is he something, somebody we can build the future in? Or we're going in free agency and draft and running back? You know, it all depends. So run the ball, please. Offensive line, do better. Please open some lanes for these guys to run. Please. Number three, we need to limit Le'Veon Bell. Now, you'd say, running? Eh, not necessarily. Jets have Adam Gase as their head coach, and Le'Veon Bell rushed for over 100 yards once all season. Is that because of the Jets' inept offensive line, or is that because Adam Gase just doesn't like running the ball? I'll let you guys decide. Comment below. But I already know the answer, and I'm pretty sure all you guys already know the answer. Le'Veon Bell is a really um, 
big weapon for them. So we need to limit him, passing and running. I don't know why Adam Gase doesn't like running the ball with him. Because just get, if I was Adam Gase, I would just hand the ball off to him. The man's just dangerous. But we need to limit him. The number four thing the Miami Dolphins need to do, no mistakes. I say this every week. Sometimes they listen. Sometimes they don't. And when they don't, sometimes it doesn't work out. Last week, we went down by 14. We still won the game. That just shows the fight in this team and the, the, the heart in this team. Underdog mentality. I'm loving it. But no mistakes. You, if we start going down, start turning the ball over, and we get down by too far, it's going to be hard to come back. Like Rams, the Rams, the Browns, we went down by 25 at some point, and that's just that's too hard to come back from. It's too hard because then all of a sudden your your offense gets predictable. It's got to limit the mistakes, especially the penalties. I think We've been getting sloppy with penalties. All of a sudden we're, we're the least penalized team in the NFL, and all of a sudden we're like, all right, I think we can rest on our laurels. Nah, limit the mistakes. Limit the mistakes, especially with the refs nowadays. Refs in the NFL are just, I'm, they're just ass. It is what it is. They're ass. You know, they, you, uh, there's a pass interference. You throw the challenge flag and they'll be like, well, it's still, it's still pass interference. But the guy was on the bench when you called the flag. He wasn't even in, he wasn't even in the game. He's home. Call pass interference on Xavier Howard. He's not even playing. Hey, I saw my eyes. So on my eyes, he grabbed his jersey. He's not on the team. He's on injured reserve. Hey, don't hit the eye. You see the stripes? I saw in my eyes. He did it. See what I'm talking about? Last week, it actually worked because there was no P.I. Brian Flores pissed, run down there, whips the red flag. You know, sometimes these refs, uh, these coaches just want to hit the refs with the red flag. And we got it overturned. That's when we do that little trickeration play. Which, another thing, they didn't show the beginning of that play. On Fox, on anywhere. Because we set up in a, in a field goal position, and then we went out to that position. Yeah, it fell messing up big time. And the number five thing the Miami Dolphins need to do to beat the Jets is this defense needs to step up. Step it up. Now, we had a few sacks last week. We had a few plays. But you're going against some of these speedy receivers in Anderson, uh, Crawford. Um, you got to step it up, especially with Le'Veon Bell. Got to get some sacks. Got to get some pressure on the quarterback. I know we have no defensive ends that can set the edge, nor get pressure on them. Van Ginkle almost had a, a smackdown play, uh, but uh, Carson Wentz just booped right over him. Gink I like seeing Ginkle in there doing his thing, but we got to step up. We need some turnovers. We need some sacks. We need some pressure. We need The quarterback can't just stand back there and, and pick his nose for a minute before we can get the ball off. So that's the number five thing the Miami Dolphins need to do is this defense needs to step up. We need to do something. We, we dropped 37 on their head. I, I watched it back, and there was a few wide-open plays that were missed. We could have easily had 50 on the Eagles. 50. When was the last time the Miami Dolphins scored 50 points? Did they ever score 50 points? And then the defense, you got it. Please, defense. Please. So that is the five things that the Miami Dolphins need to do to beat the New York Jets. Now is the time of the video where I take this pen, I put it on the ground, and I answer Who's going to win, Doug? Dolphins or the Jets? Who's going to win? If Jamal Adams doesn't play, I'm picking the Dolphins. If Jamal Adams plays, I'm picking the Dolphins. I think the Dolphins are going to win this one. I like the way the Dolphins are playing right now. Um, this isn't a knock on Adam Gase, but it's going to sound like a knock on Adam Gase. And you might take it as a knock on Adam Gase. I boot my mic again. You didn't see it this time, but I did do it. I'm going to be honest with you guys. There comes a point every season with Adam Gase that the players start getting sick of his his mentality and his stuff and and just how he just completely like things something will work and he's like but no 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 that's not that's not what I like to do I know it's working but trust me trust me trust me this will work this will work like I could have my arm cut open and I'm like Adam Gase I'm bleeding and he's like no 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 don't do stitches don't I know stitches work I know just stitches work just trust me trust me take this salt and put it in there it'll work it'll work it'll work trust me trust me no 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 so. I don't even know where that's going with that. So these players really start to pick up on that, and they start to quit on him. It happened to the Dolphins a few times. So I think the last two years he was with them, you saw it at the end of the season. They started quitting on him. I feel like that might be a little bit of what happened with the Bengals game. Again, Jet fans, you let me know. You watch the game. I didn't watch the game. But let me know. But I honestly think that the Dolphins are going to come in this one. They're going to be a little more hungrier. Um, and I think they're going to play, especially with the MetLife takeover. I think a lot of Jet fans... 
I may be wrong, but I might be like sick and tired of this Jet team. So there might be a lot of Dolphin fan in that in that stadium. Again, I'm not going to that game. We're going next week to the Giants game, but I'm picking the Dolphins to win 24-17. That's a very, very nice number. It's the roundabout number I like to pick. Dolphins are going to win 24-17. Be sure to comment below. If you're a Jet fan, comment below. Let me know what you think. Um, am I stupid? Do I not know what I'm talking about? If you're a Dolphin fan, let me know. Both teams, five things. What are the five things you think the Dolphins need to do, the Jets need to do to beat each other? Huh. Let me get to one of your guys' comments of the day. And this comment comes from It's Just Irv. And he says to me, What do you think about getting Cam Newton next year, if available, building the defense and O-line and draft a quarterback in 2021? I make this comment because it's a lot of what's going on in people's minds right now. Right? Tua had his press conference. He didn't say much. He wasn't going to say much. He's not going to you know, show his hand really talked about, he had a concussion on the sack talked about how he knows that his hip is never going to be a hundred percent. He's still going to ha lose some mobility. All these things that Tua said didn't help fans. And I don't think it really helped his position, but he said, you know, how do you say no, if you're going to be drafted five to 10, you know, how are you going to say no to that? He said a lot of stuff, right? But when it comes to this draft and a quarterback situation, right? There's Joe Burrow, there's Tua, there's Fromm, there's Love, there's Herbert, there's Hurst. I haven't done my studies yet on them because we're not at that point in the season. But for me, I'm taking, I don't care, wherever, I, that's three boops, guys. That's three boops. Uh, it doesn't matter where we're picking. I'm taking who's the best available, who best fits this team. That's the other thing we got to realize, guys. We're not going to take a 4-3 defensive end to play 3-4 defensive end. Because then all of a sudden you have a Deion Jordan, you have a Charles Harris situation. You know what I'm saying? Got to pick the guys that fit the situation. I'm not going to pick a corner that's strong and comfortable and man if all of a sudden we're running zone the whole time. See what I'm saying? So whatever is the best player available for us in that position, will, what would that be? I don't know yet. I don't know yet, but... With his question, I honestly think that the Miami Dolphins are going to stick with Fitz. He has guaranteed money next year. He's very smart. He can really help coach up these players because he's doing it with Rosa now. I might now. This is what I'm thinking. I Again, I don't know yet, but this is just what I'm feeling right now. I think the Dolphins are going to ride with uh, Rosen and Fitz, right? Uh, see how the draft pans out. If they can get a quarterback that they like, they're going to grab it. If not, I think they're just going to build through the trenches and then get a quarterback in 2021 because we have two first-round picks. We can do whatever we want with them to get the quarterback that we want, the quarterback that we think is going to be the future of the team. You do what you want or do what you can to get that guy, essentially. So um, that's what I think is going to happen, but I don't like Cam Newton. I think Cam Newton... If we do go after Cam Newton, which I don't think we will, be a lot of money. I think they'd more go after Teddy Bridgewater than Cam Newton. But again, I don't know if they'll go for either. It's a lot of money, and it just screams Dante Culpepper to me. Just screams it to me. So I'm not a big Cam Newton fan, not thinking he's not good, but just for him coming to Miami, it just doesn't make sense to me. But thank you for the comment. It's just Irv. Be sure to comment below, and be sure to follow me on Twitter. I'm breaking down tweets. And all that stuff, news breaks, I tweet it out to you. So be sure to follow me on Twitter if you want to join my Patreon. That's also linked below. I'm making a special video for my Patreons. I got about eight of you guys. Um, but I am making a special video. It's just taking me a hot minute because I got to make these videos. And then I got to make the special video. So if you want to be a Patreon, follow below. Join. There's different tiers for different types of Patreon. I, you know... I haven't decided on a higher tier, but right now it's either, you know, first day, first stab at comment of the day, and you also become a mod, other things. But if you want to join, don't feel like you need to. It's linked below. Also, my merch is a link below if you want to grab some merch. I got t-shirts, hoodies, and white, black, and that cool alternate blue that we were rocking a few years back. So be sure to go check that out. Also, check out the BitBoys. Playing Christmas games. It's that time of the year. Like I said, I'm going to try to decorate behind me a little bit Christmassy spruce it up but be sure to go check out the bit boys if you like what you see subscribe other than that give this video a thumbs up give this video a thumbs up because we got three more weeks the season's over and we start to go into off season mode we start to get ready for the draft we're getting closer and closer to free agency the draft all these moves give this video a thumbs up for that give this video a thumbs up because you think the dolphins are going to beat the jets also give this video a thumbs up because you like the content you're excited for the future of the team and it lets me know 
Check out Sportscaster and DolphinsTalk.com, two great sites, two that I'm affiliated with when I live stream. I also do it on Sportscaster, and a lot of my content is on DolphinsTalk.com, great Dolphin website. Other than that, I will see you guys. I might go live tomorrow. I'll let you guys know, either on Twitter or here. I'll let you know if I'm going live tomorrow. I might go live for like an hour. And I will see you guys with the post game uh, for the Dolphins Jets. And then next week, I'm going to the Giants game, like I said. So I might vlog that a little bit, make a cool video for you guys talking about going to the Dolphins-Giants game. Hopefully, I meet some of you guys there. But other than that, I will see you guys definitely Sunday, maybe tomorrow. But like usual, stay classy. Ends up.